Beardo Benjo. Hello there everyone and welcome to a brand new week filled with exciting new things for VR owners. This week sees the launch of Sniper Elite VR and Sam and Max. So finally, we have some great content, hopefully great content that we can get stuck into. I'll be covering Sniper Elite VR tomorrow, two videos. Quest 2 first and then PC VR, just for comparison's sake. And then I'll be checking out Sam and Max on Wednesday. So stay tuned for those. But for now, I'm going to show you something that I still believe is probably the coolest thing you can do with a VR headset and a PC. If you have those two things, you should be checking this out because it's honestly mind-blowingly cool. Now, I have shown this on the channel before, but I am aware that my audience has grown ever so slightly since I showcased this last time. So today, I'm showing off MUVR. Now, if you've not heard of MUVR, you really are missing out. It is an absolutely fantastic tool where you can play all your old favorite retro games. And it hurts me to say retro because I grew up with these things and it makes me feel old. But you can play all your favorite old retro games in VR in an amazing little bedroom that you can customize with different bed sheets, posters, floors, walls, ceilings. You can make it feel like your childhood bedroom. You can set up big fat CRT TVs and sit there and play your classic favorites in virtual reality. And you can also play light gun games, which is what I'm really gonna be checking out today. This is MUVR. I'm gonna be using my Quest 2 because I use my Quest 2 for everything now because it's always plugged into the PC and it's just easy. Um, and it's running on PC. It's not a native Quest game. And to get this up and running, you do need to know how to use the internet and where to look for certain things. Let's jump in and have a little look at MUVR. Hello there everyone and welcome to MUVR. Now I'm using a different mic, uh, I normally use my, my boom mic when I'm sitting down but I've had to move a little bit further away to make sure I'm not banging into anything and I still think I might bang into stuff. Now as I said at the start I have showcased this app, I guess it's an app not a game, um, on the channel before. Um, but I do appreciate that my audience has grown a little bit and I want to showcase it again because it's a very impressive emulation tool, I guess. Welcome to my, my bedroom. Um, now, a few things to note. I've changed the floor, the bed. This is a custom bed design that I've done here. My skull and crossbones bed with my skull and crossbones pillow. I've also put some posters up in the room. So there's a Lord Rand poster up there, uh, obviously. Dark Souls. Um, you've got a Dead Space poster here because I'm playing Dead Space at the moment and the game actually adds these kind of creases and the sheen and the folded edges so it looks like a poster. I just I just gave the game, I just gave the application the image and it's done the rest of the work for me which looks fantastic. Um, same here for this Rapture poster on the back of the door. Again, it's creasing in the... I just love the attention to detail. I love all of this stuff. I think it looks amazing. Um, a little Resident Evil poster here. Just a tiny little one stuck to my drawer. Now this I haven't changed, but this is a default poster that basically tells you that you can change the posters. Um, so yeah, it, it's quite simple to do, but everything in MUVR takes a little bit of learning um, at the very, very least. And I've also got a cheeky little Beardo Benjo poster just in there, just stuck onto the inside of that of that desk. Of that, It's not a desk, is it? It's a bloody wardrobe unit thing. It's not a wardrobe. I don't know what that is. What is it? It's a unit. Who knows? I don't care. Um, so, this game isn't about just sitting in your room. It's about emulating your old favourite ROMs uh, and systems in a unique way within VR. So, you'll see a few consoles dotted around here. And we're going we're gonna to take a trip down, I guess, memory lane. Um, let's start with the SNES. Now, the SNES is plugged into my phony TV here. Um, you can actually bring in as many of these CRT TVs as you want or get rid of them. So... For example, this one here, I don't want it. So I'll bring up my menu, uh, go to inventory, and I can just trash it. Dump it into the trash. Because you don't need all this stuff laying around. Um, it, it is basically trash. That's on the floor. I don't think I can reach that. Come. I got it. Uh, so let's chuck that in the trash as well. So you can clean up the room or set the room up in any way that you want. Whatever whatever aesthetic style, if, if you want to kind of make it look like your childhood bedroom, you can. So here we have a SNES. 
plugged into this phony TV. Now, if I press the menu button here, you can see all my ROMs and the systems that I've got running inside here. Now, currently, in terms of SNES, I just have one game, and it's Donkey Kong Country. So let's take that, plug that into there, turn turn that on, turn, turn on. There we go. I don't have to turn on a bloody SNES. So now, that boots up, and it's Donkey Kong. So I believe to start playing, I point and I... Ugh, I always get the buttons wrong. Oh, I've turned it off. Turn it on. Okay, now I'm playing the game, so I can't move anymore. My sticks no longer move me around because I'm interacting with the screen with the game. Let's skip that. Okay. Now, one thing you'll note here is you can play all these games with your touch controllers. So immediately now, my touch controllers are controlling the game rather than me in the room. Now, if you want to break away from the room, you just click in both sticks and you're back to running around. And then when you play the game again, you point, you click, you're in. So let's start a game of Donkey Kong. We're going to play one player. Now, you can play online as well. So you can set up a net link and play these games multiplayer with another person in VR who's also using MUVR. Come on, Donkey Kong. Let's get in. Here he comes. There we go. So I'm using my touch controllers here to completely play this game. Pause the game there. Uh, <laughs> some of the button configurations take a little bit to get used to. But with a little bit of trial and error and just playing around, you'll, you'll pick it up in no time. Come on, Diddy. Let's do this. This is just genuinely one of the coolest things I think you can do with a VR headset and a PC. And I said at the start, you need to know where to look. Um, alluding to obviously ROMs um, and emulation, but as long as you know where to look and where to get these things from, you can you can set up something really smart here. Now I won't spend a huge amount of time in each game. Oh my god, how do I? Yeah, take that. I haven't played Donkey Kong in ages. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time in each game because I've got quite a few games I want to kind of just show and show you how they all work. Oh, there goes Diddy. Now as you can see here, oh he nearly had me. He did have me. I'm rubbish. Um, as you can see, this is running really well. Hopefully the capture um, showcases that. But the games run beautifully in here. Maybe you didn't grow up with a SNES. Maybe you grew up with a Mega Drive. Let's check out Mega Drive now in here. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, this isn't a Mega Drive. Now you'll notice that some of the consoles look perfect. So that looks like an N64. That looks like a SNES. That doesn't... Yes, that doesn't look like a Mega Drive. Now, not all the consoles have been perfectly recreated. But it really doesn't matter. When the games run this well, I mean, this is what you're here for, right? Oh, stupid monkey. So, Sonic there, a little bit of slowdown. Oh, I'm, just, I'm, gonna, I'm so bad at everything. I'd like to see uh, an FPS counter, to be honest, just to see how well these are running. It's it's a lot to, I would imagine anyway, to have all these games in here. And things get crazy because you can, a little bit slow down there, you can run more than one at the same time. So I could pause that, come away. Turn that back on. And I've got both running now at the same time. And you can jump between them. So I can be like, okay, I want to play Sonic for a bit. Turn that on. Alright, uh, yeah, let's play Sonic for a bit. Got my speedy shoes on. Just speed. Just go. To, just run to the end of the level, Sonic. Yeah, I'll be with you in two seconds, Donkey. I've got Sonic on the go here as well. Run, 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 run. Run! That's the wrong way. Shush, Donkey Kong. There we go. I've done that level, so then I can be like, uh, come away from that. Turn that. Oh, turn that off. Brilliant. Jump into here. So <laughs> that's still running over there, but I can now come and play with Donkey Kong. Things get a little bit crazy when you've got loads on the go, um, but it's entirely possible. Um, yeah, maybe you grew up with the N64. Uh, let's jump into my N64 collection. Ocarina of Time. Why wouldn't it be Ocarina of Time? Just makes the most sense, doesn't it? flick that on and then you can play slightly slightly more modern things that I it does actually hurt me to call them retro 
But I do have to come to terms with the fact that, you know, Ocarina of Time is... <sighs> it's old now. Okay, so Ocarina of Time is running, but it's running a little slowly. It's kind of chugging along. Now, I do think there's probably... Oh, it's running quite well here. Probably a case to be made that, because I'm running OBS as well, I'm chewing into some of the processing power. But as I've said, N64 games, some of them at least, um, are a bit of a pain to emulate. So that's, that's Ocarina of Time. You know, it's running. It's not running amazingly, but it is running. It's completely playable. And again, I'm playing with the touch controllers, not with the controller. If you did want to play with the controller, you can. So you can just have an Xbox controller or a Bluetooth controller or something just sitting to the side and pick that up when you jump into the game and control it with that. That feels a little bit more natural. But if you just want to use touch controllers, you can. Um, yeah, this, this is running. Not running superbly. Um... But like with any emulation software, uh, you do need to do a little bit of tinkering and a little bit of work on your end to, to get things to work at their optimum. And I've just chucked this ROM in for the sake of this video to showcase something, so I could do some tinkering to get it to work. Now, MUVR uses RetroArch um, to basically set everything up for you. It, it sorts the cores out, which are the emulators, it scans for your games. It's actually really simple to get this thing up and running. Um, but you won't always get amazing results. But that's an N64 emulator running in here, Ocarina of Time. Let's come away from that and switch me N64 off. There we go, right, let's delete these. I don't know if deleting these frees up any, like, processing power or anything. Oh, that's something to show you. So in here, you haven't just got your um, TVs and consoles, you've also got objects. So you can fill the room with things like this, um, just nice little touches. Uh, baseball, football there, packs of crisps, you can get some ruffles and some Cheetos, some M&Ms, Milky Ways, Snickers, candles, all, all kinds of cool little things. You can also change the time of day. Um, so right now I've got it set to fall, which is why the leaves are falling down there. You can have Halloween, which is a little bit spookier, I think. Um, I think that there is like a spooky mode you can play in this where weird things happen here is random events. So you can set like little easter eggs to happen and it's kind of like spooky stuff happens really weird it's kind of a horror game in itself uh let's go to christmas uh there we go and you can set the time of day so you can see the sun change in there look oh look at that let's set it to night time at christmas there we go look at that that's lovely oh there's a christmas tree wow that's cool so yeah you can set the time of day oh, i should probably turn my light on there we go um you set the time of day, so all the time of year. Um, and then you can fill your room with little objects like the skateboard and like the shoes and like the M&Ms and stuff. Okay, now I've just done a couple of little tests when I've not been running OBS. I've shut OBS down, played a few things just to confirm. And it does seem to be that OBS is putting a huge pressure on the PC to try and capture these things. So I'm going to try and show you a light gun game. Hopefully it runs okay, but it might be a little bit slow. I promise you when you're doing this without OBS, they run like a dream. So this is meant to be a dream cast. Um, and that is a copy of House of the Dead 2. So if we turn that on, on this big TV, on this TV stack that I've created here, which is just insane, it should, if I point at it and click it, give me a light gun, which it does immediately. Now I've had to set that up to tell the program that when I play with this Dreamcast, it's light gun games only. So I have two Dreamcasts set up in here, one for normal games and one for light gun games. Please just run half decently so I can show people how this works. House of the Dead 2, yes. All right, in we go. Yes, the house. So, <laughs> this plays just like you were playing in an arcade. You fire at the screen, and then when you want to reload, you shoot off the screen. You can also set it to be the under trigger button if you want to reload. I can't remember if I've set You're that up. Let's there. skip this. Ah, oh, it's going to run bad. I can hear the music already, right? It's fine. So, when you don't have OBS running, trying to capture, eating up all your processing power, you can sit here and play light gun games in VR, and they run really well, normally. Ah! So I'm shooting off screen to reload there. I will test the under grip. I don't know. Oh no, I can. Yeah, so my grip is set to reload as well. Ah! No! But I still want to do that because it just feels authentic. <laughs> G!
over there. It's just the best. Uh, the best voice acting in any game ever. Harry and Amy are coming to back us up. I bet they are, mate. They're on their way. Thanks, G. Thanks, G. I don't want to die. Ah! Here he comes. I don't want to die. Too late, mate. Ah, just too late. You've been mauled by a zombie. Oh, that's running so slowly. It, it sucks that I can't show how good this is when I'm not capturing. But I've dropped the record quality. Um, and OBS is just chewing up my processing power here to try and capture this. There's a lot going on. I'm running this in VR. It's emulating and I'm capturing. So yeah, I understand why it's running slowly. But it is still a shame. So this is House of the Dead running in VR. Now this would work for any light gun game you can get on these old consoles. Uh, point, point Blank, was it, on the PS1? It would be a great one to play in here. I love that game. Was it called Point Blank? I think it was called Point Blank. Die, you stupid worms! No! 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 So that's House of the Dead. Now if I pause that, come away from that, and throw this Dreamcast into the bin, because, you know, best place for them really isn't it um i've also got a ps1 down here with a copy of time crisis in it so if we boot that up this works exactly the same way i'm playing this on this lower down tv again light gun game all that it just it just feels cool to play these games in here it's it's a stunning bit of bit of tech now in my tests without recording i was able to run time crisis and house of the dead simultaneously and and play both if i still if i might still have a little bit of a capture from that Look at that action scene. Oh my god, this is the height of gaming. Area 1 star, let's do it. Alright, so in this, you obviously hide and then you press the button to get up. Because you reload when you're hiding. Take that, you shit. <laughs> it's just so cool. Come on. You can't get me, mate. Oh my god, what's all that exploding? What's happening here? Go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I just I just love it. I think it's brilliant. These light gun games work so so well in here. See this is running a lot better even though I'm capturing um, House of Dead was struggling um, for some bizarre reason. But normally conventionally it does run perfectly. Get in there! Oh you've missed the bloody door you idiot. Oh it's okay it's opening again. It's going to be fine. Take this! So yeah, you can create your own little arcade at home. As long as you know where to look. Ooh, for the ROMs. And MUVR will let you play them in VR. So it's, it's super immersive. You get your own little bedroom to play in. Uh, and I just love it. I think it's one of the coolest things you can do with a headset and a PC. And I think more people should get involved. MUVR is free. Get it via a Discord group. I'll try and remember to put the link in the description. Um, but obviously, if you feel like you want to support, you can donate to the people who are making this and working on it and constantly updating it to make it as best as it physically can be. Um, it, I just think it's a great bit of tech. I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to shoot any more people. Ah! It hit me right in the face. Ah, oh, these hooks are coming. That's clever. Let's stop now. Uh, oh, I should probably pause the game, though. Oh, no, it's going to keep going. Oh, oh, can I pause it? Can't pause it. Just turn the PlayStation off. Beep. So, so this is MUVR, a completely customizable bedroom um, that you can put posters in. You can change the floor, ceiling, walls, bed, pillows, all of it. 
Um, and then you can set up your own TV, CRT, TV setups, hook up some old games, and just sit in here and play to your heart's content in classic retro things that you loved when you were younger. I, I think it's really, really smart. Well worth checking out. Uh, it runs beautifully, but as I say, I've struggled to capture today in the highest quality because I think it does take quite a lot of processing power to do the VR side of things, um, plus the emulation, plus me capturing. So it has taken a bit of a hit. But conventionally, every other time I've used it, the games run flawlessly, um, with a few exceptions, usually N64 games like Goldeneye and Banjo, actually. Banjo struggled to run when I did try that. Come and check out MUVR. It's great for just, even if you just want to have a quick look at it, a little run around, a little tinker, it's, it's well worth your time. I will see you tomorrow for Sniper Elite VR, and then I'll see you for the rest of the week for other things. Take care of yourselves, guys. I'll see you very shortly. See you later. Please give us a Dead Space remake or a new game. I just want something at this stage. Please, Isaac.